space about Condor. Oh, thank you. So um, yeah, this workshop is um, will be recorded and we will post the uh, recording um, in in our TUD uh, wiki page. So uh, if you miss any notes or uh, if you want to um, go over, uh, go through all of these details again, and um, please welcome, um, please feel free to um, check uh, those recording links in our um, TOD later. Um, so before we start, um, I would like to share, uh, oh, just one second share a link if you type arc ubc.ca um, and go to our TOD, I will paste this link into the chat box. Just one second. Okay, so this is our wiki page. If you scroll down and go to the training session, uh, I'm going to copy this to the chat box. So everyone, oh, <laughs> thanks Jeff. <laughs> um, he, he already posted uh, in the chat box. So if you go to the training session and scroll down in the UBC ARC workshop table, um, you can see um, the first one is the uh, this workshop and you can find the slide deck here uh, the first one is for the uh, for today and the second one is for tomorrow it has the um, name and also the date uh, in the file name so um, please feel free to download it um, okay let's go back to the slides um, so first, we uh, I would like to acknowledge that University of British Columbia, um, both campuses are located on uh, traditional ancestor and unceded territory of Musqueam people and Six people. Um, so today we are going to talk about the virtual uh, environment, um, fo um, but focus on uh, virtual e virtual M or virtual EMV. This program, so we will. First, talk about uh, the virtual. What is the virtual environment, and, and then why do we need to use the, use the virtual environment, and um, what's the virtual like? How to use it in high performance computing, and how to manage it with uh, the specific program called virtual EMV. Um, so this slide lists some um, links um, that can that have more details if you want to learn. Um, more about this program and learn about uh, more about virtual environment. Um, uh, please feel free to click on those uh, link and um, check more details there. So first, uh, what is the virtual envir environment? Uh, there's a definition in the Python um, um, documentation that it is an isolated folder structure allowing for separate software environments supporting specific versions and dependencies or libraries. Uh, you can click on this link here to uh, for more details, but in general, th this diagram shows what a virtual environment is. Uh, basically, you uh, in each virtual environment, you have a program. So for example, here is a Python 2.7. It has the um, program name Python, and it also has the version uh, 2.7. Uh, let me yeah. has the name and also the version. So um, under this, uh, in this environment, uh, it also has some Python packages you may want to use, and uh, again, it has the names and also the versions. So if you um, the beauty is that you can have multiple virtual environments in your um, in your either laptop or in uh, high performance computing in your uh, own directory, um, so that you can manage the versions and you can manage the tools, you can manage the pa package. Um, so sometimes the uh, high performance computing cluster has uh, has the program you want to uh, use that that would be great, but. Uh, um, in more cases, you will you will need to ask the system admin to install it for you because you cannot find it in the system. So, um, but 
um, but if you have you virtual environments, if you build the virtual environments in your um, local directory, you can install the tools or um, packages by yourself in your um, local directory. You don't need to bother like communicating, uh, writing emails to to the um, system admins and ask them to um, install them. And you may it may take several days or even weeks to to install. So uh, if you use virtual environment, then it will be um, faster and quicker. Um, so in each virtual environment, you can install different packages. For example, the first one is NumPy and um, uh, Matplotlib. And the second one, uh, you can have maybe Pandas or SciPy. Or, um, it, it's, it's totally up to you. And also uh, you can see in the last, oh, in the last uh, environment, it doesn't have to be um, Python. In this case, it's R. Uh, and it has R packages like tidyverse and ggplot too. Um, so uh, why why do I need a virtual environment? Um, um, it's actually uh, very convenient for uh, for people who are using high performance computing because um, as a user uh, we don't have uh, the root access. We can we are not the system admin. We cannot install programs into the uh, root directory. So if you want to install the software, then the virtual environment can help you to um, install it in your local directory where you have the full control. Um, and when you have multiple projects that maybe need um, different versions of software or different um, software stack, um, then you can use virtual environment to separate them. So if, for example, in project one, I want to use uh, Python 2.7, and in project two, I want to use Python 3.9, then you can separate um, these two virtual environments and load, diff, uh, load these uh, environments in at, uh, when, you need, when, you, uh, when you need. So uh, the third um, advantage is that um, when you uh, create a pipeline where you install lot, lots of programs in uh, by yourself, and you want to share these pipeline to some uh, to your colleagues. Um, so, as a high performance computing um, cluster user, uh, you will have some directories that share uh, that you share with uh, your colleagues. So, in you can install those virtual environment in those shared folders so that every, everybody in, in your team can use it. Um, they don't need to um, install them again. And the last advantage is that uh, if you have a software that uh, it looks pretty easy, maybe you just need to download and unzip, um, but to run it uh, or compile it, you have to, um, like you find that there are lots of dependencies you need to install uh, in the system. And uh, the virtual environment can help you to install them and also help you to manage them uh, because all of the, these dependencies and the software are in, a, in the same folder, basically. So uh, it's easy to like move or um, archive or even delete them. So that's the beauty of a uh, virtual environment. Um, and this, um, so again, uh, if you, um, there are two ways, basically, if you want to install a program, the first way is to contact the um, system admin to, to help you install. And the other is to create a virtual environment to, and install by yourself. Um, as I mentioned that um, in, if you chose the first, if you chose the first option, then you don't need to learn how to install the program. It's easy to share the pipeline with the, uh, with other teams. And also uh, it can save your own space, but it's slow. Um, especially when everyone, everybody asks the um, system admins to, do, uh, to install different programs. And also it can make the system very messy um, when like, um, 
we will have more and more versions of and more and more of tools in the system. So um, if you install too much in your like uh, laptop, then it will you will find that the your laptop will be slowed down, and um, it, it's also less stable because um, the system uh, needs to update like every month. So sometimes after a big or major update, then probably the previous um, settings or previous uh, install installation will be broken. Then um, the system admin won't be able to check like every tool uh, and make sure every tool will work um, after each um, update event. So um, sometimes you may find that the, the previous installed previously installed uh, program um, doesn't work. Um, so it also takes time for the system admin to fix it. And you won't be able to control the set of configurations um, for some, it's, uh, this would be very important for some tools. Um, so, but if you choose um, a virtual environment, then it will be much faster, easy to for testing and more stable. Um, and also, it's more uh, it's uh, reproducible because you can you have the full control of the versions, and you also have the full full control of the settings. And uh, once you learned, once you know how to uh, install them uh, with virtual environments, it's kind of a um, experience, valuable experience for you um, for your future. Um, but you have to. It has some learning curve. Uh, you need to like take uh, use. It may take some time to to um, to learn it. Okay. So, is there any question so far? Okay. Sounds great. Um, so, we um, in this workshop we will um, introduce um, people to programs that um, can help you manage the virtual environments. And the first program is called Virtual EMV. Uh, we will focus on this tool to today. And tomorrow, we'll, oh, <laughs> tomorrow we will be um, talking about uh, Conda. And so, the first one, virtual EMV, is available on cluster and also the Compute Canada or so-called the Alliance clusters like Cedar, Graham. Um, some of you may have access to it, um, like have access to both. Um, so you can use this tool in both um, high-performance computing clusters. Um, that's the um, advantage. Um, but it's only for Python packages. So if you want to have an R or even Perl or other uh, environments, then you, you won't be able to use it. And the, we will talk about counter tomorrow. Uh, it's available on Sakai, but not available on the, um, on the Alliance cluster. Uh, bec that's because it generates lots of small files. Um, and um, you can handle Python. You can, you can also have other um, tools like R or Perl or other, um, any other programs. So Conda is like, uh, has a uh, reposit repository space that uh, have lots of packages um, there. So you can have more options. Okay, so virtual, virtual environment, a uh, virtual EMV, so this is the environment manager for Python. So you can only um, install Python packages in with that, with this tool. And it, it, you also use this pip. Some of you may be uh, familiar with this command. Um, you can install, you can use pip to, basically you can, uh, to install a Python package. This is the most commonly used um, command. Okay, so let's, Okay, so let me open a terminal. Oh, oops. Okay, so now you can see I'm in Sokai. So okay. 
and um, to use To use um, the virtual EMV, um, first we need to load this tool from the system. Um, you can you can do module load software collection twenty twenty one. If you um, so this this. Uh, module is actually uh, automatically loaded, uh, but it doesn't hurt if you load it again. And then you can load GCC, for example, 9.4.0, and load Python 3.8.10. So that's just the example. Um, what we need is this module called pi virtual emv slash this is the version number so now we can use virtual emv um, to create a virtual environment first you need to decide where you want to have this environment to locate. Um, so um, out the, if you are working um, in Sokai, then um, I believe you may have some um, teammates that uh, you share um, some space with. Um, so the, the two places you share with your, co uh, with your te uh, teammates are uh, project space and scratch space. So um, we recommend people to install the uh, virtual in environment in the project space because um, you still like you will generate some small files in uh, inside this uh, folder and you don't need to like edit these files in the um, do when you run the job you just need to load these um, tools. Um, so you don't need to uh, use your scratch space um, because that's for running jobs and writing um, outputs. Um, and the project space um, is big first, uh, it's five terabytes. And also it's shared by, your, um, by the entire team. So if you install something there, then your colleagues, um, your team member can also um, use them. So, I will go to project space. And so this, so this is our allocation code in my folder. Okay, we have some folders there. Um, Training and virtual EMV. Okay, so okay. for example, I want to have something here. Delete this. Uh, you can see it uh, when I try to delete this folder, it takes some time because um, the Although it doesn't produce as many uh, files as Conda does, uh, it still has uh, lots of small, uh, files there. Okay, that's good. So for example, I want to have my virtual environment here. Then what I need to do is call this program name, virtual env and space, then give it a name. 3.8.10. So you can see that um, I use this env underscore pi 3.8.10. Uh, um, and this name has the Python version 3.8.10, which we loaded before. Um, it's recommended to name it. Uh, 
like with the Python version, because um, maybe some of you already know that uh, if you install a Python package uh, in a particular Python version, if you change the Python version, then um, the package may not be able to uh, be uh, may not be able to use. So, um, for example, if I install a, Py a NumPy in Python 3.8, if I low, um, change the Python version to 3.9, then uh, you will find that you cannot use the NumPy you installed. So it's better to um, remind yourself by with this name that which Python version you uh, you're working with. So after this program, if I type list the folders and files, you can see there's a new um, folder created. And now it's almost empty. Oh, right, so it already has something here, sorry. <laughs> uh, it, So what we need to do is to um, like it, enter this environment. Um, the command we need is source and followed by the folder name and bin activate. So after running this command, you can see we I have uh, this folder name in the brackets so that indicates I'm inside this environment. So if I want to quit, um, get out, just type deactivate, then this uh, folder name is gone. Um, so if uh, now I'm running this command because um, I'm now in this directory, which has this uh, folder. So if I'm in my home directory, for example, if I go back to my home directory, and then if I run this command again, it will complain, report that no such file or directory. That's because this is the relative, this is not the full path. So, you don't have to go to that place to uh, enter the uh, environment. You can just simply type the full path, right? For example, if I include the entire file, uh, folder path here, um, ADR3, training, and virtual environment, and demo, and EMV. Then bin folder activate. Oh, uh, source. Okay, now you can see um, the environment is activated, or I I'm in the environment again. Um, so. This means you don't need to. Uh, you can you can uh, enter the environment any at any place you want. You don't have to go to that folder, uh, although though that's an option. Um, so if I now and uh, uh, once you are in the environment, you can you you can install the program at any. Uh, at any folder or at any um, directory, so you don't have to go to go inside, uh, go to that folder to install the program. Uh, you can install it um, anywhere. For example, in the home directory, so all of the program will be automatically stored in this folder. Okay. So, for example, if I want to install uh, NumPy, I can just do in pip install numpy and it will search for the um, installation file in the um, in the python package um, repository space um, oh, it is quick 
oh, I already have them installed, uh, downloaded somewhere so in, in my cache. So it's, it's pretty quick. Okay, so now if I want to see whether it's installed, I can do list. So now you can see I have NumPy 1.24.2, and these four are installed automatically when I created um, the virtual environment. So if I type Python c import NumPy, then it doesn't report any error, which means it's good. Okay, so um, to install the um, the Python package, um, there are general three ways. One is from the pipi. Um, that's what, what we did for, for NumPy. And you can also build local wheels. Uh, if I scroll up, you can see I'm uh, using the um, cached.whl file. So that's the wheel file. Um, so basically, it's the it's you can you can uh, think it as the um, installation package for Python pa uh, for Python package. Um, so you can build these wheel files, uh, local wheels, um, from some other sources and then install them um, from these local uh, wheels. And the third way is to um, is no, to install the package from um some other um places like for example pytorch you have to grab this installation package from there instead of pipi okay. um okay so now we have an environment and if we um as i mentioned that uh using the virtual environment is uh, it's good for uh, building a reproducible work workflow, uh, which means you can kind of archive this um, environment. Um, so how to do it? In, except you like archive in the entire folder, which is not recommended because it's big, and also it may not be able to you may not be able to use it after you like transfer this uh, this folder to some other uh, platforms. Um, what we recommend it, what we recommend is to um, use this command called pip freeze. And uh, let me go to a place that doesn't have it. Okay. And now this folder is empty. Um, so we, what we recommend is to use this com, um, command pip freeze to save all of everything into a small text file. Um, now we call it requ requirements.txt. Um, you can name it anything you want. Um, so after doing this, you can see we have our requirements.txt. And then if we open this file, you can see that there are only two lines, NumPy 1.24.2 and virtual EMV with the version number. So once you have this file, you can just Store, the, store this file or transfer this file to some other platform and rebuild the virtual environment with this command pip install dash r requirements.txt. Uh, I'm not going to run it here, um, but the idea is that instead of um, archiving and transferring the entire folder, which may not work uh, in other platforms, uh, it's recommended to store everything into a small text file, which ha has only the program name or package name and the uh, versions. 
and you in the new pre- in the other platforms you can um, rebuild your um, virtual environment by based on this uh, small text file. So it's easy to um, transfer and also easy to manage. Okay, so I have shown this pair playlist um, before, and if you want to um, uninstall a program, you can just do pip uninstall numpy. And to quick to quit, uh, you can use deactivate. So, so once you have the program installed in your virtual environment, um, the next job for you is to um, make it work uh, in your job script. So when you submit a job script in um, Sockeye, um, you um, request the war time, the CPU, the, the node, the memory as you want it. And then you need to load the virtual environment, um, all of these uh, mo modules, and then source, and then source the, And then source the um, um, the environment, um, enter the environment, um, activate it, and then run the Python program. So, is there any questions so far? That's good. Okay, so that's how you how it works in Sockeye, and in in uh, the Alliance cluster or Compute Canada um, cluster, it might be more complicated. So first, um, let me go to I opened another terminal and you can see now I'm in CEDA, uh, which is the Compute Canada class, one of the Compute Canada clusters. And then um, to load virtual environment, you first need to check. And you can see there are multiple versions and um, and there's an E here, which indicates that it's not, uh, you don't need to load them. You need something else which has them loaded for you already. And in this case, it's the Python, you just need to load Python 3.9.6. So it's different from, um, from Sockeye. In Sockeye, you have to load virtual ENV and followed by the version. But in Compute Canada or the Alliance cluster, you just need to load the um, particular Python version, um, which uh, will load the virtual EMV for you. And in the, and then you may want to go to a uh, project space. Go to the test folder and now it's empty. So what we need to do is again, call this virtual EMV program and then give it a name. If I want to build the um, environment here, but you have to add no download 
um, in this command. So um, it's written, it's also uh, written in the documentation of Compute Canada um, or, or the Alliance uh, wiki page. Um, they require you to add this no download option because um, the, the Alliance cluster doesn't allow people to install the Python package with pip through the internet. Um, instead, they have already built all of these um, installation package for you and put them in the cluster. So basically you will install all of the program with the local files instead of grabbing something from the internet. Um, so that, it's, it's different from Sokai. Sokai allows you to uh, grab everything from the internet, but in, Compute Can in the Alliance cluster, uh, you cannot do that. Um, so now I have the folder created and the next um, is to activate this uh, environment. And this step is the same find where is the um, the folder and source the activate. And you can see I have this environment activated now. And if I install NumPy, it will be pretty fast. And you can see it's processing dot like uh, dot dot whl file um, as i said they already built these wheel local wheels in the system so this and this is the file path you can see and now it's done and if i do pip list Why it's so slow. And you can see the, we have the NumPy 1.24.2 and it has a plus Compute Canada. That's because it's from the, it's not from the internet. It's from the local wheels that uh, Compute Canada builds. Uh, if I compare my Sokai, So on my left hand is my Sokai. If I do pip list, uh, it has NumPy 1.24.2. And on my right hand, it's uh, the Alliance cluster. Um, it also has the NumPy and you can see the version is the same, but um, just the um, on the right hand, um, you can see this plus computer like this weird tag, um, but the version of NumPy is, is the same. Um, that won't be an issue, but, but sometimes it can cause some problem. For example, if I do pip install matplotlib and in both Compute Canada and And Sokai, you can see on the left hand side, it's trying to download something from the internet and has the speed of 21.7 megabytes per second. And on the, on the right hand side, um, it doesn't download anything. It just grabs something, something from the uh, cluster. And now uh, Sokai is already done. And if I type pip list, Uh, we can see that um, it has met plot lab 3.7.1. Um, and also it has some other packages. Um, this is also the beauty of um, virtual environment because you can, it can handle the dependencies. 
uh, for you. You don't have to install all of these dependencies one by one. And the other side is a little bit slow. Oh, yeah, it should be finished. Okay, so now again, we do pip list and compile the compel them. You can see um, everything here has this plus compute Canada. That's because they are from the local wheels. Um, and we have this matplotlib, but you can see the version has is a little bit different, 3.7.0. 3.7.1 and we use the same command uh, if you remember both uh, both pip install matplotlib and here um, pip install matplotlib so the command is the same but the version it installs are different so that's because um in Compute Canada, it doesn't, it, it didn't um, build the all the all of the package versions into local wheels. So if I type um, avail wheels and space followed by the matplotlib. You can see it only has one 3.7.0. It doesn't have 3.7.1. And if you make a little change, uh, if I search matplotlib and ask it to show all versions in Compute Canada, you can see we have 2.2, 3.5, 3.5, 3.4, 3.5, 3.6, 3.7. And that's all of the versions we have in um, Compute Canada. It doesn't have the latest version 3.7.1. So if you want to have the latest version, what, what should I do? Oh, uh, we have a question here. Um, we just load one specific module and the install with a specific version of Python only will be run on. Yes. Um, if I type uh, in Compute Canada, we have 3.9.6, right? If I type which Python, you can see this Python is located here. It's in my directory. This is my name. This, this is a. Oh. This is my name, and this is the folder. And this is where, uh, the file path in my project space. And if I type Python version, it's 3.9.6. And on the left side, if I type which Python, again, in Sakai, it, it's, my, it's my allocation. It's the project space, and it's the folder. And if I part, so, so the Python I'm using is located there. And if I type Python dash dash version, you can see the version name is 3.8.10. Of course, you can load other um, versions as long as the, uh, the system has this, ver this particular version. Um, but um, if you use 3.8 to create a uh, environment, then you have to stick to this version when you use that environment. If you change the Python versions, then you have to like recreate another ver another virtual environment uh, with with this file requirements.txt. Okay, so um, let's go back to the. Um, the version stuff of matplotlib. Um, as you can see that um, it doesn't have the latest version. So what, what should I do if I want to have 
install the latest version in um, Compute Canada. In Sockeye, it's not a problem because it grabbed the latest version from the internet. But in Compute Canada, we have to um, build the local wheels by ourselves. So for example, if I want to I'm using NumPy as example, because uh, matplotlib, you can see it has lots of dependencies. It will take lots of uh, a very long time to, to do that. So I'm using the NumPy as an example. If I do the same, command but change matplotlib with numpy it will show all of the versions numpy 1.24.2 but if i want to install 1.24.0 so for example if i want to install numpy equals to 1.24.0 then we, I will get an error because the version is not in the system. Um, everything you install in Compute Canada have to um, have to be from the local wheels, and you can see error could not find a version that satisfy the requirement. That's because there's no no particular uh, local wheels built uh, for this version. And what we need to do is to build it by ourselves. Um, so first, let me make it bigger. Okay, now it's better. Okay, so first um, we need to create a text file. Re remember it's requirements.txt and then we just need to put numpy 1.24.0 and save it. So now I have a small file requirements.txt. And then what we need to do is to build a wheel with pip wheel dash r. Um, it may take some time, so I may not have time to finish all of these, but after this command, oh, it's pretty fast. So now I have this wheel file, which has a very long name. And what, we, what I need to do is to install, instead of numpy, um, the Instead of the uh, program name or package name, I just specify the, the wheel file here. And it found that it has already has this, this version installed and it's going to uninstall NumPy and then reinstall another version of NumPy again. Okay, so Um, okay, so um, that's how you build. It's done. So let, let, let me let's let's take a look. So if we um, check the version again, you can see the NumPy has it's 1.24.0, and it doesn't have this plus Compute Canada because we built it by, by ourselves. Um, okay, so. The last slide to, for today is um, when sometimes you don't you don't install the um, the Python package from Pippi or from the local wheel. Uh, it has a very special command like um, like this one in step three. So how how do I know? Oh, how do I know um, I 
shouldn't use uh, PP or I shouldn't use local wheel. Um, so what we can recommend is every time when you try to install some package, just go to the, um, the website. For example, PyTorch is pretty common, um, commonly used. And if you open Google and search for PyTorch, And there, if you scroll down, you can see how to install um, PyTorch. If I select pip, pip, the pip in Python CUDA 11.7, you can see it has a very long um, command. So you just need to copy and paste to, um, to your command line. So that's how you find um, some, of, like, um, some of these uh, special um, commands. Okay, so that's everything for today. Is there any question? Sorry, I, uh, we only have seven minutes left. But if you have time, I can stay longer if you have more questions. Nope, no question. Is it I, I made, made it too uh, very clearly or <laughs> or is it too easy? Okay, it, it looks good. So if there's no questions, um, then I think we will see um, some of you tomorrow. It's uh, tomorrow will be about a calendar. And we will uh, post again. We will post the recordings in the um, in our TUD wiki page. Um, if you um, have any other any questions at any time, please feel free to reach out to to us uh, by email emailing to arc support at ubc .ca. Um, So I wish everyone have has a, a good afternoon. <laughs>